Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. The House Judiciary Committee voted along party lines Wednesday to authorize subpoenas for special counsel Robert Mueller's full report, with committee chair Jerry Nadler arguing that lawmakers have the right to see the unredacted version as well as all supporting evidence. The committee must see everything, as was done in every prior instance. Uh, obviously, some material will have to be redacted uh, before it's released to the public uh, to protect privacy, and we're not willing uh, to let the attorney general, uh, who after all is a political appointee of the president, uh, make that substitute his judgment for ours. The subpoena threat coming after Attorney General William Barr said last week that he'd release a redacted version of the 400-page report no later than mid-April. George Terwilliger served as William Barr's Deputy Attorney General in the George H.W. Bush administration. Welcome. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. The, uh, uh, as a matter of law, what is the Attorney General required to turn over to Congress uh, regarding the Mueller investigation? Well, it's entirely in his discretion. Uh, what he's really required to do, he's already done. That is, tell him that he got the report. Um, and um, he actually went beyond that, Paul, as you know, to right. uh, summarize the, quote, principal conclusions in that report. But it's also uh, entirely evident from all the publicly available information that the AG is committed to transparency and is trying to get as much of the report to the Congress and to the public, I might add, um, as the uh, as the law allows. So, what about this uh, this uh, the argument that the AG has made is that uh, you have grand jury testimony, for example, that you need to redact, that you have intelligence uh, sources and methods that you might need to redact, and of course, under Justice Department rules, you don't want to include information about people who haven't been indicted for a crime but that might tarnish their reputation. Are all those justifiable reasons to redact in your view? In my judgment, they are. Uh, I mean, it, the first two are, are um, uh, to use a colloquial phrase, no-brainers, because it's the law. The third one is a policy, and we saw with the antics of Jim Comey what happens when that policy is violated and people who aren't charged are nonetheless the subject of uh, what appear to be official opinions and conclusions. What about this distinction that uh, uh, Congressman Nadler tries to draw between what might be be released to the public regarding grand jury testimony and what is given to Congress. He says Congress has the right to see it all, everything, even if the public doesn't. Is that a fair distinction? Um, I think it's a debatable distinction because he's relying on Watergate era precedent under the old independent counsel statute. Um, this regulation, in fact, was designed, and I might say designed on a bipartisan basis with Janet Reno, then Attorney General Janet Reno's full participation to limit the information that comes out of a special counsel investigation exactly for the reasons we were just discussing. So if, uh, uh, if they don't turn over everything, if he doesn't, if he, there are significant redactions, or for that matter, even minor redactions, and the Congress says, sorry, not good enough, we got to have it all, and they subpoena the attorney general, and he says, I'm sorry, I can't give you more, what happens then? Well, the Congress has, has remedies uh, apart from a subpoena. I must say that the, the current talk of a subpoena strikes me as um, a lot of political theater um, uh, surrounding this. Um, but the Congress can petition the court um, and demonstrate, uh, meet the test of demonstrating that they have a specific need for that grand jury information which ought to overcome the secrecy that attaches as a presumption to such information. Well, but, and, and this distinction about turning over something to Congress, I mean, you know Congress is a sieve. Anything that's turned over that doesn't come to the, to, you know, that the public hasn't seen, it's going to be leaked, and it may be leaked selectively. Uh, I mean, that's, it's, let's face it, that's the, a realistic view of what happens. Well, of course, of course it is, and um, it's not only a realistic view, but um, the empirical evidence supports <laughs> your conclusion. Um, but the fact of the matter is, Paul, that I think the Attorney General seems to recognize that, and that's why he is aiming for as much public transparency to all of this as is possible. And uh, you have any reason to believe that what's in the report itself, that is in the 400 pages, would uh, uh, be contradictory to Robert Mueller's conclusions about collusion and obstruction? 
I have two reasons not to believe that. One, the Attorney General, um, Bill Barr, is a very intelligent man, and he's not going to get out um, ahead of his own headlights in terms of summarizing the principal conclusions of the report that would be inconsistent with the report. Um, secondly, um, you know, this, this was a comprehensive investigation, and those conclusions seem to, to be uh, relatively ironclad, even if uh, Mr. Mueller didn't uh, uh, deign to make a judgment about the obstruction statute. Okay. Uh, the uh, one other issue I want to ask about, and that is this request from Congress for the tax returns. Of, uh, of Donald Trump for six years. Is the statute, in your view, that the Ways and Means Committee is relying on, is that pretty ironclad when it says he sh the Treasury Secretary shall produce the tax return? I haven't studied it um, extensively, Paul, but from what I have seen, it does unfortunately seem pretty ironclad because, uh, in general, as you know, tax return and return information is subject to a great deal of confidentiality. But this was an outgrowth of the Teapot Dome scandal, one of a number of uh, statutes that that scandal produced that probably deserve a second look. But then uh, if they do submit uh, this request again and finally issue a subpoena, I guess if they resist, it goes to court as well, right? Yes. I, I mean, I, again, as I say, I haven't studied it, but there may be some basis to, to challenge that subpoena. All right. George Sherwilliger, very helpful. Thanks for being in. Nice to be with you, Paul.